So today we're going to give you some insights on hyperthyroidism. Okay, this is a situation where the thyroid is producing too much thyroid hormone. It's usually diagnosed with low thyroid stimulating hormone and high T3 or T4. The pituitary originates the thyroid stimulating hormone, which basically tells the thyroid to produce T4. Okay, so if this hormone is high, um, it'll turn this off and it'll actually be low. But if it's low, there's no turnoff switch, so it keeps producing more and more and more. There's a feedback loop here. So there's definitely some problems within the receptors and the feedback loop. But here are the symptoms. Uh, irritability, muscle weakness, can't sleep, increased heart rate, decreased tolerance to heat, um, diarrhea, weight loss, not weight gain, eyes are bulging out, tremor, panic, and anxiety. Now, there's several different um, types of hyperthyroidism. You have Graves, which is autoimmune. You have just inflammation in the thyroid in general, different nodules or a nodule like a cyst. Number four, excessive iodine. Now, you don't ever want to give someone with a hyperthyroid condition any iodine, okay? And you don't want to give them gallbladder support because, or bile salts, because uh, bile salts increase the conversion of T4 to T3, and we'll get actually more T3. So we don't want to do that. That would be good if someone had hypothyroid issues. But in general, cruciferous vegetables are good because that actually has a tendency to uh, block some iodine. So that would be okay, but not bile salts or iodine or sea kelp. Number five, excessive synthetic thyroid hormones. So if you have hyperthyroidism and you're taking uh, Synthroid, for example, that would be very, very bad because it's going to make it worse. Now, there are several triggers to this condition that I would recommend you doing further research. One is with lectins. Lectin is a, a molecule that is in plants, and plants develop this as a defense mechanism against bugs and other creatures that will eat the plant and so they can't run away, so they develop these little molecules that go into other species and create uh, havoc and problems. So many times if we're sensitive to it, it can create a lot of inflammation in our bodies. And gluten is a type of lectin, and lectins have a similar molecules to different um, tissues in the body. And so your body uh, could potentially end up attacking, especially since lectins are inflammatory and they can actually invade the gut and create inflammatory conditions. And if you think about autoimmune in general, it's a confusion in the autoimmune system where your body has antibodies and it's attacking itself. Well, anything that breaks open the gut lining, and if there's a molecule that's similar to the thyroid and it goes in there, your body is gonna start creating antibodies against its own tissue, okay? And, and sets the person up for either hyper or hypothyroid issues. So this is an area to research, uh, avoiding uh, foods high in lectin, very, very important. And of course, avoid gluten. But of course, if you're doing keto, you wouldn't be consuming gluten anyway. Another important thing is uh, fasting or intermittent fasting or periodic prolonged fasting, very beneficial for dropping inflammation. And if you're fasting, you're not eating lectin, so that's gonna help right there. And supporting the adrenals because the adrenals are intimately involved with the immune system. And if you're run down, you're stressed out, your immune system is um, weakened and it makes it very susceptible to developing an autoimmune condition. All right, guys, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. So I wanna thank you for being here and watching my videos. If you haven't already subscribed, go ahead and do so so you can stay informed of future videos.